Welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to learn how to create a custom Fortnite item shop using PHP, HTML, and CSS. We're going to use PHP to talk to the Fortnite API and get us back a list of items that are currently on the item shop. We're then going to use HTML, HTML and CSS to display these items on our website. By the end of this video, we will have a web page that looks like this. You can see we have the current item shop here. We have the featured items and the daily items. Uh, it tells us when the item shop's gonna refresh. Uh, we get the name of the each item and it tells us how many V-Bucks each item costs. Also, we can click on an item and it will take us to the Fortnite tracker page. Each day, we're gonna hit the API one time and save the items in a JSON file. And then the JSON is what is gonna drive the data for that page. If we check out the 19th, see so we got a different set of items here. The 19th is running off of the raw JSON from the 19th which looks like this. This is our custom Fortnite item shop. The first thing we're going to do is head over to fortnitetracker.com slash site dash API. This is where we will get our access token. This is the API documentation. Some guidelines, uh, one request per two seconds. Down here is the four endpoints currently available on the Fortnite API. We got the player stats, the match history, Fortnite store, and the active challenges. Now to get your access token, you need to log in. Then when you log in, there will be a little button right here that says create an API key. Click it, fill out the form, and your API key will be visible right here. Hence why I am not logged in, because I do not want to give away my API key. Now we can start coding. The first file we're going to create is going to be our config file. This config file is simply going to hold our uh, API key. So I'm going to define my API key right here as fn underscore API key. Then I'm going to place my API key right here. First, I'm going to hide my screen, put my API key right there. And then I'm going to close the config file. The next thing we're going to do is create our functions file. The first thing we're going to do in this functions file is require our config.php file. This way we have access to our API key, the define fn underscore API key. Next thing we're going to do is set our time zone to central time because I'm in Minnesota. Item shop refreshes 6 p.m. my time every day. The first function we are going to set up is the actual getting data from the API. So we're going to set up our API endpoint. And we're going to get this endpoint from the fortnitechecker.com down here. This is the one we're working with, the Fortnite store. So we're going to copy that, paste that right here. First curl option we're going to set is our endpoint URL. Now we're going to specify our API key. Now Fortnite requires that we pass along this API key as a header. The header that has to be passed along is trn dash API dash key. Here is where we're going to use our define from our config file. Now we have to pass along a few other curl uh, options to make curl happy here. And then we can get our response back. This is where we actually execute the curl call. First thing we want to do is we're going to store this response in a JSON file. So this line is going to create a file date.json in that folder. And the date will be whatever the date is that we've passed in this function. So after we open up the file, we got to write to the file. And we're going to write store file. So here's where we write the response that we got back from our curl call, the store file that we just uh, created. After that's done, we want to close the file and we're done. Now we're going to create a function to get the data from our JSON file. All right, so here's our get store data function. We pass in a date parameter, so it's gonna get us a store data for whatever date we pass in. We're gonna check and see if the file does not exist, if we don't have a JSON file for that date, then we're gonna hit the API. However, if we do have a JSON file, we're not gonna do this step right here, and we're just gonna return that the data from that JSON file. We're gonna use file get contents, we're gonna return a JSON decode of that file, and pass in true as a second parameter. That means that we're gonna get a PHP array back. Now I'm gonna create an index file. This is where our front end will go. All right, so we've written a few functions. Uh, let's use them. So we're going to require our functions.php file. So now in our index file, we have access to all the functions that we've set up. First thing we need to do is we need to specify a date. We're going to make it the current day. 
But now we're going to hop back to our functions file and we're going to call our get stored data function. This line right here is going to get the stored data. We're calling our get stored data function with the date we're passing in, which is the current date. It's going to call this function. It's going to check for this JSON file. And on first iteration of the page, it's not going to exist. So we're going to hit the API and store the API results in a JSON file. Then we're going to display the results. If all goes well, we're going to hop into this function right here, store data. The file's not going to exist, so we're going to create it. We're going to hit this API endpoint with our API key, get a response, store it as a JSON file with named the current date. And then we're going to return that JSON file as a PHP array right to the stored data variable. Hop over to the browser and hit our index file. We got our array and each item for today. We get an image, an ID, a name, how rare it is, a category, and the V-Bucks that it costs. Now that we're getting all this data back, we're going to create another function that is going to sort this so it's a little easier to loop over on the front end. Call this function get store sorted data. This sorted items array is going to be what gets returned. We're going to set it up initially with two subarrays, one for the weekly and one for the daily. Under the weekly, we're going to give it a title, featured items for the daily, say daily. Add to each of these subarrays is an array of items. So we're going to initialize these to an empty array. Now we're going to loop over each item that we got back from the API. So we got our for each set up over each item. We're going to clear up the name of the item to make it URL friendly. When you click on an item in the item shop, the link to the actual item on Fortnite Tracker is fortnitetracker.com slash locker. The item manifest ID comes from right here. We got the manifest ID. We get the name and we, we're going to replace all of these spaces here with a dash and make the whole thing uh, lowercase. After we've added that on to the item, we can add the item to the sorted item. So we're adding it to the item sorted store category. The store category is also coming from the data right here, store category. So if the item's the weekly storefront, it's gonna add it to the items array for the daily or weekly. And that's how our sorted items is created. And then we're gonna return it. Hopping back to our index file, we can now call get sorted function, get store sorted data, instead of just the get store data. So we can get our uh, array back that we just created. So we refresh the page and now we see that the array we have set up is what we get back. We get our weekly storefront title that we set here, featured items, and each item for the weekly has been added to the items array. Our second array is the daily title, daily items, and we can see all the daily items in the daily item array. Perfect. Next thing we're going to do is switch out this date. We're going to set up another function. We're going to call this get store date. Here's the first section of our get stored date. We're going to set the date equal to today, and then we're going to get the tomorrow date just in case the item shop needs to be refreshed on the current day. If we're past 6 p.m., we're going to set the date to tomorrow's date, which means the API will be hit again, and so we will get the newest items. If we didn't have this here, we would see the old items up until midnight of the current day. But this guarantees that we will see new items when the item shop actually refreshes. Now we're going to handle a date that the user might pass in. This if statement here handles if a uh, custom date is being passed into the URL. First thing we check for is if they've actually passed the date in. And the second thing we check for is if the date does not equal what they passed in. Basically, if they've passed in a date and it's in the past, we're gonna do this stuff. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the JSON files we have in this folder right here. We're going to loop over each of those files. And if the date matches one of those JSON files, that's the JSON file we're going to use. So we're going to break out of the loop and then we're going to return that date. This is the last function we're going to set up here. We're getting all the JSON files from the folder and returning them with a little bit of extra inst information. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get all the files in the folder by scanning the directory. Then we're going to sort them so that the newest file is always first in the list. So we loop over each file in the directory. We explode it, its name on the dot. So we know for our files in that directory, it needs to be a date 
.json. If it's not, then we're not going to add it to the valid files array. So we set up a valid files array. We set the file, set the date, and the next two links we set up are back to our server. First one is the link to the JSON, the raw JSON file. Next is a path to the store, which is the link to our site, but we're appending on the date. That is the get store JSON function. The date is now using our get store date function right here. Get store date. So depending on if they pass in a date to the URL, Otherwise, it's going to get the default date. Then we want to get um, the files. Say shop files equals store JSON files. This is going to get a list of all files in our store JSON files folder. All right, so get shop files, print this out. Yep, there we go. We got the 19th and the 20th. Now we can hop over to our index file and we can start styling up our store to make it look a bit better than a var dump of data. We got all our data. Now we can start coding up HTML. So here's our HTML skeleton. Let's hop down to the body here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to give our page a title. Under the title, we're going to put the refresh date. So we can check out our awesome looking Fortnite item shop so far. Look at that. What did we miss? We missed an echo, I bet. It happens all the time. Yep, we have to echo this out. Fortnite item shop items refresh on January 20th at 6 p.m. CST, which is tomorrow at 6, which is correct. So we're going to wrap this in a container. All right, so this is where item shop items will be displayed, and under here we're going to give it a, a line on the bottom. Below here is where we're going to put our past item shop. Let's hop back to the browser and quickly check this out. The first thing I'm going to set up is a font. I'm going to copy my this font face over here that I downloaded right here. This is the Fortnite font. We'll set up a font face here. We're going to call this the Fortnite font. Paste in the file that I just copied over. On the body, set the style equal to font family Fortnite. That worked. Look at that. It's looking like Fortnite already. All right, so on the body, what else do we want to give it? We give it a background, and if we're going to give it a dark background, we want to give it a light color and some padding. On Fortnite.com, I found the colors for the different rarity types, so I'm going to create a style for each of those. All right, let's code up the actual items in the item shop. So remember, our, our items are from this store data array. For each section, we're going to display the title of each section, just section title. Look at that. Featured items, daily items. We got a nice looking background color. We got the black text. Now we can move on to the items. For each section, is going to have its own list, and each item will be in that list. So this is where we're actually going to start coding the items up. We have our container, then we have our list, and create some list elements. So we've set, our, set up our first list item. We've given it a class of rarity dash, and then whatever the rarity is on the item. This is going to reference the background color up here. We're going to create each item with a border of 3 pixels white uh, and a max width of 200 pixels. Give it a margin on the top of 20 pixels, a uh, display in line block. Then we're going to set up a link around each of them to go to the actual Fortnite tracker page. When we set up our items, we created this link to FNI, FN item. This is where we are going to paste that in the front end, right in the href. We have our, our A tag set up, taking them to a new tab, target blank. It's going to be the link to that item. All right, so we have our item set up. Each item uh, gets its own A tag, target blank, new tab with the link that we've customized to go to fortnitechecker.com. Inside that A tag, we're going to set up a container div positioned to relative. Inside of the position relative div, 
we have a position absolute div with a background black, but it's got an opacity of 50% on it. This is so we can see through to the to the image behind it. Since this is a position absolute inside of the position relative, this will be overlaid over the image down here, which is the image of the, the item, 100% width, and we have an overlay. Position absolute gives us the ability to overlay this div on top of this image. And inside of here, we have title and V-Bucks. We're gonna give it a little bit of padding, set the name, and then display the V-Bucks under the name. That is how each item is styled. Let's check that out in the browser. Item shop. Now we're starting to get somewhere. Under featured items, we have Ice Queen, 2,000 V-Bucks. Why is everything so big? Oh, duh. We're zoomed in. Looking pretty solid. Only thing left to do is code up past item shops. Past item shops are based on shop files up here. So we're just going to display an item shop for each shop file that we've saved as a JSON file. For each shop files. First thing we do for each file is we're going to spit out the date like this. This is what it should look like. Each JSON file gets its own section. The list in each of these sections will just contain links to our Fortnite page and the raw JSON file. We need two list items. One will be for the Fortnite store and the second one will be for the raw JSON. All right, so our list has been set up. I'll verify that on the front end. There we go. We see our Fortnite store down here. We're seeing a link with the date on it and a raw JSON file. Click on the store. It's going to send us to the date of the 20th. And the raw JSON that that page is running off of is right here. That's going to do it for the front end. We got the back end serving up the data, front end serving up the good looks. And we got ourselves an awesome Fortnite item shop that we created. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys learned something. I'll catch you later.